so this is my 2016 Ram 1500 fucking water pump went out so we gotta do that so first off you gotta take off this shroud right here you got all these little like grommets so I used a kind of like a pry tool to get it out so you just kind of you know pry on it once that comes once that comes off this will come out now I got to take off the shroud the shroud has a half piece that needs to come off first which is like this half so there's more grommets on the bottom that you have to take off so I'll take those off and then I'll come back all right so it's got like three of them right here or maybe four once that happens it pries off that side and this side and then it'll it'll slide off so now I'll go work on the top so now right so now right here I'm gonna take off this hose it's got a hose clamp on this side a hose clamp on the other side down here take this hose out of the way make sure your truck is cold or else you're gonna get fucking antifreeze all over you my truck is cold and it doesn't have any antifreeze because the water pump fucking blew so i'm going to go ahead and do this and then i'll be back all right so as you guys can see i got the hose off already so now there's this 13 millimeter and there's another one on the other side on this side that i'm gonna take off but then the top shroud should slide out but you got to make sure you take off that bottom piece first so that it doesn't get stuck on the fan once this is out then i'm going to try to take off that fan there's this plug right here as well that's attached to this piece right here so just pull that one out so you don't get nothing jammed up and stuck all right so there's these other three grommets there's one two three on this side you gotta take those out before the shroud will go out all right guys so I took the fan and the shroud off and in order to take off the fan you have to rotate the that nut which is right here clockwise and all that I did was I used this 300 millimeter uh, crescent and the other thing that I had the other thing that I had to do was I bent this piece of steel and I stuck it in here but I went behind I went behind the belt stuck it in there and pried it up against the tensioner pulley and that gave me enough leverage the nut on there it, it's not even tight it's pretty loose like it was pretty much just a little oomph and it was loose and then after that i just you know kind of just twisted it by hand and it came off all right so now i'm going to take off the serpentine belt and in order to take off the serpentine belt all that you need to do is on this nut right here no actually here you get your three eighths um ratchet stick it in there and twist it and it, it'll it'll come off and i'll try to show you that guys all right so once you once you guys have it on there just put some downward force and the belt comes right off as you guys can see now that it's off look at this water pump what a piece of shit fucked up my whole saturday look at that and you know what guys that freaking water pump was actually squealing kind of i don't know if you guys can hear that like that but when i would look at the serpentine belt 
I thought it was this idler pulley right here or the tensioner pulley but it was actually the freaking water pump I was on the highway and it fucking blew on me so if you guys hear some noise no, don't wait it's more than likely it's your fucking water pump so these here are the bolts that go around the water pump I'm sure they're all different sizes this one right here is a half inch so a half inch socket is perfect on here so right now the other thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this off this is a tensioner so I'm looking for the socket for this now so I could take this off before I take everything out that way I got some leverage to take it off so here's the tensioner and here's the bolt I took it out with a 16 millimeter I'm not sure if this is supposed to be like standard sockets or metric but 16 millimeters would take it off alright guys so once you take off all your bolts, take off the thermostat housing. I pulled out the thermostat just to see what it looked like. I actually bought one of them fucking thermostats that stay open if the if it fails. You know, if it fucking overheats, it sticks open. That way your car won't overheat or whatever. It was like fucking fifty dollars. Um, took off all the hose. These go to your heater core. Um, this one went up here. The there's another one back here. So I got all the hoses off, and now I'm gonna pretty much just pry the water pump off, and then I get to put the new one on. Okay. Here's another thing I wanted to show you guys. I grabbed all the bolts and I put them onto the water pump just so that they're all fucking different sizes. See like this, this one's huge. And then you got a freaking little one. That way I don't get messed up on where they gotta be. Once I pull that old one out, I'll put this other one on. Here's your housing. That's where that other hose went. Goes into that. That goes here. Um, all right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and t try to pry off that other one off, and then I'll see if I continue tonight or just uh, start tomorrow morning. It's already kind of late. It's already gonna be seven o'clock here in Colorado, so you guys can see it's kind of dark. Um, okay. All right, everyone, so before I get a little too ahead of myself, it's the next day, and I'm putting the water pump back in. I've already lost a couple bolts, but pretty much the pattern is a small bolt, a long bolt, and then small bolt, long bolt, all the way around, and then you got two long bolts one right here and one right across right here this one this one that's a small bolt all right so i'm gonna go ahead put all these bolts back on uh, make sure you have them all look out for the cross member you see down there there's like three holes and the bolts just fall right in so I've already lost two of them in there. Had to use a long magnet to get them out. Um, got them out, but make sure you have all the bolts. All right, so I got the water pump back on. And then I put the serpentine belt back on. I didn't have the sticker on my truck that says how the serpentine belt goes, but luckily I had videotaped all this, so I just looked back. But here it is. It goes from the air compressor up to the alternator, down the idler pulley, around the water pump, around the tensioner pulley, onto the crank pulley. 
and back to the water to the AC compressor. Now, before anything else goes on, I have to put all these hoses back on. So I'll put all the hoses back on, clamp everything back on, close my radiator down here, or plug it, not close it. Fill it all up, start the truck, and make sure that there's no leaks. Once I see that there's no leaks, then I will go ahead and put the the fan shroud back on, or the fan, I'll put the fan back on, and then put the fan shroud back on. Alright guys, uh, when I'm done with that, I'll be back. Alright guys, so, I had to put the fan shroud back on, because this last hose that goes here, to from the radiator to the water pump, um, has to go over the fan shroud, and if I fill it up, then I'm fucked. So I doubt that there's going to be any leaks. I'm still going to check for it. But so you put your fan shroud cover back on and then you slide the fan from the bottom. Once that's in, you have someone hold it for you. So somebody will hold the fan for you and you start tying it. This goes counterclockwise. Once it goes in counterclockwise, just give it a couple taps. Um, to sink it all the way in and then you need to put the bottom shroud piece back on there's the clip that goes in on this side and one on the other side those go in first then there's three clips on the bottom side that snap in they're like back here once those snap in there's another three or four that pop up and that's it it's it's on okay all right guys so i got everything back on i just started filling it up with antifreeze trying to get all the air bubbles out i'm gonna go ahead and Keep adding antifreeze. I already got two gallons in there. I'm going to add another one. And then I'm going to go ahead and start it. And then we'll look for leaks. So far there is no leaks. At least around any of the hoses. On the radiator on the bottom. Where the plug's at. So. We'll just go ahead and wait. Alright guys, so I got everything all buttoned up. I went around, uh, I jumped on the highway, probably did five mile loop. When I came back, the needle on this side was for the coolant temp. It started climbing. So when it started climbing, that's when I realized that I needed to put more antifreeze in there. So I went, I grabbed the top hose. The top hose showed, uh, or it didn't show, it felt cool. So <clears throat> I cracked cracked it open, and when I did that, it created like a vacuum, and it sucked up all the antifreeze that I had inside the reservoir. So I closed that up, refilled my reservoir, you know, to the max level, and it's been fine now. I've done two test drives um, that have been about 20 minutes long each um, and the temperature is just it's it stays pretty steady so the coolant temp the highest that I, it's gone to was it's like uh, 208 210 212 so everything's looking pretty good we also went ahead and changed the, the oil today. So she's running smooth again. Thanks for watching. Please uh, give me a thumbs up and please subscribe. Thank you.